All right, welcome back to round two. The first time we installed our Forge Motorsport upper air box as well as our Forge Motorsport short shifter. And today, like we talked about last time, we're gonna be working on our dump valve. This is an atmospheric blow off valve from Forge as well as the turbo inlet or hard turbo inlet, basically replacing the plastic piece with a nice powder coated metal one. Wrinkle black, look at that. We are going to be getting under the car this time. This is gonna be a little more advanced of an install than last time, but it should be pretty straightforward, especially with Forge Motorsports instructions. So I did keep our larger silicone inlet for the intake and the clamp. I shouldn't need this though, but this will come handy later. So let's take a peek at this dump valve. I love their packaging, wow. So we have our valve here. This is gonna mount directly on the turbo itself. We'll definitely need this for the install. And then it looks like we have some sort of solenoid here. I didn't look ahead to see what this is, but we'll probably need it. All right, and inside here we have a couple different things. Looks like we have a plug for the solenoid, some gaskets and then some vacuum line. So we'll probably have to tee in somewhere to the factory vacuum line for this. All right, so it looks like they come with two different spring types. There's a blue colored spring and then a red colored spring that usually is gonna be determined off the vacuum at idle. So I will read the instructions to see which one we need. I'm assuming it's the blue one because it's already in there. Usually the red one's gonna be, or like the additional one would be if we're running like a different turbo or something like that. We got some gaskets here. A T for our additional vacuum line. We have this nice bracket with hardware included in order to mount this solenoid. And then this plug, which looks like it replaces the a factory one. We're going through this together. We'll explore it. As far as the turbo inlet, we have our bag of hardware right here. Oh, so we have this uh, CNC aluminum piece which mounts the turbo itself. We are gonna reuse the gasket on the factory one. I did see that. We got some zip ties there, probably just to route some factory wiring around. A couple more hose clamps, worm clamps, and then some hardware for the turbo inlet, as well as it looks like some sort of reducer for a vacuum line. So before we go ahead and tear the car apart and then realize that we don't know what we're doing, I am gonna look ahead at Forge Motorsports install instructions just to make sure we know exactly what we're getting in for. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the engine cover and that'll give us access to that turbo inlet. Cool. All right, so I am gonna remove the upper intake here just to give us some extra room. We'll put this to the side. Next thing we're gonna do is move these vacuum lines off of the factory inlet. So this little T here. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna remove this 12 millimeter hex, as well as the one down there, which is right behind this. So it's kind of tucked in, but it is accessible. It's, I don't know if you can see, with, oh, actually I'll point to it right here. One. And then I'm taking the 10 mil off, which is just behind this little solenoid here. The next step is to take this breather tube off the intake, this large one that has the braided mesh on it. So I'm actually gonna take that off now before I fully extract the 10 mil, just so that the intake is a little more rigid to pull this off. And secondly, it's just a little bit in the way. So I'll just move this right over here for now. And then we're gonna remove the small vacuum hose here. You can't see it. I'll show you when I get it off. And we'll put that to the side here. I'm just gonna tuck it in here. Now we're gonna go down under, and I don't mean Australia, I do mean down on the car. I mean under the under the car. Going under under the car. So we should be able to access the turbo area right through a little panel behind the wheel. So we're gonna take this off and hopefully have access to the turbo. All right, so we're just gonna remove this panel here. Once again, forgive the salt and dirt on my car. Unfortunately, we live in a cold weather state. State of cold weather. All right, so we are gonna have to get the car in the air. 
which it is, and remove the under panel from the engine to access the turbo to get the bolts off of the factory turbo inlet. So I'm gonna crawl up under here, do it. There we go. There's the turbo right up there. Got it. Oh, what a beauty. All right, so we're gonna take this bolt out and then this side looks like a stud. So there should be a nut that comes off that. And then this little orange thing here, this little rubber thing, that's the gasket we're gonna reuse. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the tools for this. We'll get it off, switch the gasket over. And from there, we should be putting things on. Oh, I love working on new cars. And I believe this thing is free to go. Yep. <laughs> With a resounding clunk. So I'm just gonna pull this gasket out now because I don't want this to catch on something as I lift this entire intake tube out. So I'm gonna keep this nice and safe down here. All right, so we're having a little bit of a pinch getting this thing rotated out of here. But luckily, it is three pieces that make this up. So we're just gonna take off this lower section that has that hard 90 to the turbo. What if I hold it from the top and go down and pull it down? Yeah, let me loosen it a little more. All right, I'm gonna it. hold it from the top while he pulls it down. Oh, there we go. Boom. Jesus. Okay. All right. So we just got this thing out. It's super easy to get out. <laughs> so the, the big difference that we have with the Forge Motorsport version is with the factory one, they typically have these little kind of cutouts or indentations. And this is just to fit around a, a lot of the stuff that's in the engine bay itself and make things as compact as possible. But that could have an issue with airflow. Now, I know it's a factory turbo car. It's probably not choking itself out with this pipe in there, but it's nice to have a little bit more efficiency with the airflow. So that's why we're upgrading. And then down the line, once again, just like with the inlet, it came with both the different couplers. You can switch this out as well. If you were to do a larger turbo, they do have a larger opening on this silicone piece to accommodate that. So it's pretty cool to know that we could reuse this if we were to upgrade our turbo down the line. And also just knowing that we have a little more efficiency on the airflow with this, let's just get that. So this is the new piece that's gonna go on the turbo. So we are gonna reuse that gasket. I'm just gonna line up this little finger there and press it back on. All right, that's good. Okay, so now we are gonna pop over to the blow off valve or dump valve installation. So we need to do this with the turbo and let off. So we figured before we put the new one on, we may as well just complete this step. Earlier we went over all the parts that are included. Now we're gonna go ahead and install it. So I'm just putting the solenoid on the bracket that they provided and tightening it down with the three mil Allen key. So we got this on here. We are gonna use a 10 mil socket to attach this to a bracket that's already on the motor. I'm gonna take the 10 mil off the back of this. All right, next up we are going to find that T they removed from the inlet and pull off the left side. There we go. So we are going to use the supplied T to branch another vacuum line off of this. And then we're gonna put the factory vacuum line back on the left side of our new brass T. All right, next up we're going to plug the wiring harness into the solenoid until we hear a click. So at this point, we're gonna go underneath the car again and remove the three T30 Torx bits from the factory bypass valve and it's our new blow valve.
Cool, so we got the factory one off. We unplug that solenoid, which is going to plug into our new one. At this point, we're gonna put the new dump valve or blow off valve on the turbo. So we're just gonna plug this new solenoid and the old solenoid plug. There we go, got a nice click out of that. And then we're just gonna zip tie this up out of the way. Probably right there. First. All right, so we just routed the two vacuum lines from the solenoid down to the dump valve itself. Uh, I'm just using some zip ties to get these things nice and Tiny. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and finish installing the turbo inlet itself. All right, so car enthusiast worst nightmare. We are missing a tool. We need an E8 socket, which is new to me because we I've never used one of those before, but it's like an inverted Torx. It's gonna help us remove the stud from the turbo itself. Totally overlooked it before we started the install. So we're gonna run out, get one, and just come in tomorrow morning and finish up. So you get a good night's sleep. We'll see you then. All right, we're back. I slept in the shirt. It's very comfortable, very snuggly, but I got the turbo stud out. Stud for the inducer side of the turbo at least. So got the tool for that last night. Came out like a dream. And then we did pick up the correct hardware. I did have to shave the ends down a little bit just to make sure we didn't poke into the turbo. But just to recap, we're gonna put this on the turbo inducer. That's gonna go to our silicone inlet opening. This will come up to this hard pipe which mounts to the engine. And then we have our breather tube and vacuum line that we're gonna plumb in there. And then after that, we're gonna put the intake on and see what this bad boy sounds like. Cool, she's on there. All right, so we have the new machined part on the inducer inlet, turbo inlet. So we're gonna go ahead and put the silicone tube on now. I did, like I said, already put these two barbs on for the vacuum and breather lines, just to make it easier. So that's a tight back there when we're putting it on. So here we go. I got the turbo inlet there. Like I said, I did put both barbs in and then I did also attach this metal pipe to the silicone U kind of shape. I figured by the time we got that in there, it might be kind of tough to reach it. I'm glad I did because it was pretty tight to the silicone. So I got the worm clamp on there. I got the hard pipe into the silicone. Once we have the turbo inlet tightened, we can come back up here, just rotate the hard pipe to be the right spot and should go from there. New glove. I tightened down the worm clamp, joining the turbo inlet silicone to the upper hard pipe. At this point, it did say in the instructions that it comes with this little spacer here. So this is going to attach, oh, sorry, is optional. So this is gonna go between either the hard pipe and the mount on the engine or not. So it depends how everything sits. I mocked this up and it does appear if I have it bolted all the way, you can kind of see that that pipe is shifted forward a little bit. So if I use this little spacer, it should just help line those up better. So we are going to go ahead and use this optional spacer. So at this point, I have that tension down all the way. I did make sure that it lines up with our upper air box. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this onto that pipe, tighten everything down, and we should be good to go. All right, so the last part we have to wrap up is the vacuum and the breather lines. So we are gonna replace this spring clip with this nice worm clamp, which Forge Motorsport provided for us. And then for the vacuum line, we're just gonna zip tie that like the rest of them.
the stuff. So first impression, definitely a lot more turbo noise, like a lot, like the, the wine at like the low RPM especially, like it's very whistly, which I'm assuming is just the less like deadening material of the factory turbo inlet. I don't think it has to do anything with the blow-off valve at all. Uh, but yeah, like a lot, a lot more audible noise, which is cool because turbo noise is always good. The blow-off valve is less of like a whistle and more of a, like a dump, which I guess it's a dump valve, so. But yeah, it sounds good. It sounds good to me. I, I really like the, the turbo noise, like the down low, the, the spool. So I hate to compare products because obviously everything everything is different and Forge Motorsport definitely gives their product a lot of R&D. But as far as like my experience, it reminds me a lot of my tile blow off valve where it's like I said, it's like that 360 degree release of the diaphragm. Uh, this design looks similar as far as like there's, there's not a single port like an HKS or a Gretti or something like that. It's like a 360 degree outlet. So yeah, it sounds just a lot like a lot like that, like all the air coming out. No whistle to it, but it, it sounds like a really good noise. All right, so I've had the car for I think two days since we last talked, you and I, me and you. And uh, yeah, I think when we first drove the car, it was raining outside, so it was kind of hard to hear all the noises. That's a big old truck. So it's hard to hear a lot of the noises, but uh, yeah, when it is not raining, there are noises. Uh, noises abound. Yeah, a lot of lot of suction noise, a lot of uh, a lot of compressor surgy. It's pretty cool. So yeah, I would say you know. Compressor surge isn't like great for the turbo. This might be able to use like a little bit softer spring, like just a little, because I do have to get like pretty in the boost for it to actually blow off. But uh, overall, uh, I, I think the turbo inlet is making a lot of like that whistly low down, suctiony kind of noise. But uh, overall, yeah, the noises are good. I can't really, like I said, we haven't dynoed the car, so. I can't say if there's any sort of, with a blow off valve, I, I don't think there's gonna be any at all. But with the turbo inlet, you know, maybe a, a marginal horsepower increase, maybe a tune would help that. So we just got back from our first test drive. All in all, definitely makes an increase in sound. So just like the intake, we heard a lot. Obviously, as far as power goes, we haven't put this thing on a dyno yet, but we do plan to once we can get some tuning. Until then, the inlet, definitely you could hear like more of a whistle noise from the turbo, especially lower down in the RPM range. And with the blow off valve, it's, uh, sorry, the dump valve. It definitely sounds like a little bit of compressor surge when you're just revving it at idle, which is kind of cool. And then when you're driving it, like I said, it gives that release noise. It's only more of like a like a tuner. Like I said, the one thing I can relate it to is like a tile blow off valve where it's just getting all that boost pressure out as fast as possible. So not as much whistle as the factory one, but definitely gives it a cool noise. And like I said, any sort of like turbo flutter, a little bit of surge, it sounds really cool. Thank you again for Forge Motorsport for sending all these parts to us to test. If you guys wanna check those parts out for yourself, visit our site, grcorolloparts.com. Until next time, Stay in boost.